Spontonians, thank you so much for supporting the show. We got some donor shout outs. Brian Resnick donated $100. Brian, you're terrible with money. And I hope you're not a married person because your spouse will be furious when this pops up on the credit card statement. <laughs> Brian Resnick, thank you and good luck with that fight you're about to have. John McCluskey, even worse at money than Brian. <laughs> He's worse at money. $200. What? Come on, man. John, what if something happens to you? You got to save your money. And thank you. Thomas J. Fitzpatrick II <laughs> spent $250 on Spontaneous Nation. Well, with a name like that, anyone with a numeral in their name, they can afford it. So thank you, Thomas J. Fitzpatrick. You rich country club snob. <laughs> and getting back down to earth, Elizabeth Ventura, $100. Elizabeth, sisters are doing it for themselves. You're a lady that says, I have my own job. I buy my own shoes, just like in that Beyonce song. Destiny Child, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> what's the women? All the women independent throw their hands up at me. That's you. Elizabeth, you spent $100 supporting our show, and we thank you so much. Thank you to all of you for your generosity and your terrible business acumen. And now, on with whatever. Welcome, welcome everyone. I want to welcome every single person on Earth and in space. Do you realize there are people in space right now? Welcome, space people uh, of Earth descent. I am not welcoming any non space beings who are listening to this right now. Of course I'm flattered that beings of other races would be listening. I'm talking about off earth. Listen, don't try to make it out like I said something I shouldn't have said. Beings of other races, of course, refers to extraterrestrials, additional terrestrials, auxiliary terrestrials. Maybe we have people stored off planet for some occasion where if for some reason let's say everyone on earth needs to move a couch and they're like well we if we all need to move couches when is this going to get done because i can't none of us can do it by ourselves maybe the rock <laughs> Maybe Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He can move a couch by himself because he's no candy ass. Oh, as of this recording, Dwayne The Rock Johnson alluded to several candy asses on the set of the Fast and Furious franchise. Have we yet discovered the identity of these candy asses? History will be the judge. We Look... <laughs> Maybe it'll be sealed like the Warren Commission. And The Rock will, will be like, hey, 50 years after my death, you can open this and you will learn the identity of the candy asses. But for now, the country just isn't ready. But I do want people to think about it. Who and who is not a candy ass? Who candies the asses? As the old expression goes... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a podcast where I invite special guests to have a free-form conversation with me inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then I invite some improviser pals onto the show, and we embark upon a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes inspired by the conversation that I have with the aforementioned special guest, and it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he sounds like. And now it is time to introduce our special guest, this gentleman. I'm very excited to have him on the show. He is an hilarious person whom you've seen 
on various film and television enterprises, but also has his own podcast on the Howl.fm website app thing entitled, You Know Me. Please welcome Eugene Cordero. Hi. Eugene, hello. Hilarious. It is. <laughs> it's very nice to see you again. I don't think I've seen you since you did my Dead Authors show. No, and long boy, that was a blast. That was so much fun. I got to you, play Confucius. Eugene played Confucius. Seek that out, the Dead Authors podcast. Oh, it man. is still up and available for you to find. Guys, so great. <laughs> um, but after that, and then after what you said earlier, um, that... When I played uh, Confucius, I, I felt a little racist against myself, <laughs> but I also felt a little racist against when you said, you know, other races in space, but I, but then it, it, it didn't last. <laughs> but I did I'm think, glad it yeah, didn't last. But I did think about aliens in general not liking us mm-hmm. now that I think about it, because we call them extraterrestrials. Right. Now, so they're not they're not just like us, they're extra people. Yeah. What what I think it's supposed to be a compliment. It's supposed to be mean like you're even more than we are. <laughs> yeah. But it comes it sounds it yeah. doesn't sound great. No. It's like, oh, there's extra people out yeah. there. Or extra <laughs> things. And it's like, no, no, you're equal things. If there are extraterrestrials, does that mean they're also intraterrestrials? And is that just us? Yeah. <laughs> Asked an answer? Did you? Yeah. I'm here to just answer every question, right? Correctly? Speaking of questions. Oops. Eugene, I ha- <laughs> <laughs> Of course, opes.com. You can check to see if, if any questions have been answered. It's got every question. Every question and every question answered, kind of. That's right. It doesn't give you the answers. It just says, this question was answered. <laughs> Eugene, I have a question for you from our previous episode's guest. Are you curious as to the identity of our previous episode's guest? I am. Can I have it in a piece of paper so nobody knows? I tell you what, if you want to know, I would direct you and the listener to the Spontaneous Nation Archives at howl.fm. Ooh. Hours of listening pleasure await you. I hear it's the the episode right before this one. We it's true. Chronologically. The epi- I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The episodes are released in the order in which they are recorded. A lot of people try to catch me. And they're like, oh, but uh, that person wouldn't have been that person. Yes, it would have been that person because I do not lie. Eugene, here's my question. Yes. Did silent movies have to be pitched back in the 20s? Huh. This is maybe the least personal question we've ever got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is just someone wants to know a fact. Yeah. Also, I think it's an easy one to answer. <laughs> Go uh, ahead. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you still have to tell people what the idea is, even though they're not talking. Because I don't know if you've ever pitched something. You don't do all of the dialogue during the pitch. <laughs> You don't go like, oh, here's my pitch for the movie. This guy says this. This guy says this. You do if you're bad at pitching. Oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been in a situation like that where you got – if you are a ner- – if you're ever nervous, yeah. do you talk too much or do you talk too little? Um, I um, I talk – I don't know. It depends. It yeah. depends on what kind of nervous I am. Mm-hmm. I think if I'm like nervous um, – to do something physically, like uh, like jump off something or, um, <laughs> you know, uh, then I get very quiet. Now, is, is this something that comes up a lot? Um, well, fear of heights comes up a lot, so I get quiet. Does it really? When I was a kid, I used to be afraid to even go on the second floor of a mall that I would, like, walk on the store side and run my hand against the store. And when there was oh, an opening, wow. every time there was an opening for a door, I would be nervous. Wow. So, like, I'd run my hand against the wall, and then there's an opening for everybody to go inside, and I'm like, oh, no, there's nothing for me to hold on to. I don't know why. So, like, the ra- it was because the railing where you could see the, the, onto the lobby of the yes. mall, was, that was too much. Too much. So I'd be on, I'm always on store side, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Is that something that persists to this day? No. No, I realized also that the fear of heights is not the fear of falling, but the fear of jumping, the curiosity right. of jumping. Right, right, right. So um, I think that that curiosity was always there. And I also saw, uh, like, growing up, you'd go to, like, public pools and stuff and see people get pushed into the pool, mm-hmm. and that was always my fear. I never got pushed into anything. That's my fear to this day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anytime there's, like, a ledge, I'm afraid of somebody pushing me over when I was a kid. Wow. But I was never bullied in that way. Right. But, but no. did you did you have to take steps to conquer this fear? 
Um, no, no, I don't think so. I think I just started once I realized, and it was at a late age mm-hmm. that I realized that it was my f- curiosity of jumping. Right. That I went like, oh, okay. You so, you were able to pinpoint it's that weird urge that you get when yeah. you are some, up someplace high. Yeah, and going like, I wonder if I f- jumped, how badly I would get hurt. So you really thought it out. It wasn't yeah. just a primal urge. It right, was right, right. you had the conversation with yourself. Yeah, but that's a, <laughs> that's a little different. Yeah, but that's a quiet conversation. I don't have. <laughs> it's that. a very quiet. Con- <laughs> yeah. One would hope. Yeah. One would hope. I'm not talking out loud. Going, hmm. I wonder. <laughs> probably my leg, and then an arm. I mean, it be- depends on how I fall. <laughs> <laughs> What's the highest thing from which you have jumped? Um, I had to, um, for the last thing that I shot, I had to do a stunt where I um, flew, I fell out of a helicopter that was like, um, I think it was like 20 feet in, onto one of those pads and then the boxes and stuff. And was this a false helicopter? Or yes. Or? Yeah, okay. yeah. It was on like a crane. Okay. And they tilted the crane sideways and I um, had to like keep my eyes on the helicopter because if you look back, you'll start flipping. Wait, you keep your eyes on the helicopter. You have to keep your eyes on where you were jumping from in order to stay flat and land on your back. Right. If you start looking past your, like if you look up, then you'll start turning that way. Wow. Yeah. So how did it go? Um, well, they did it first from like six feet. And that's when I first went like, we and then looked back and like was landing on my neck and they were like, bad idea. And I was like, very, yes, you're right. And then they went up to like 12 feet and then we did it and I kept looking at it. Were you on a wire or no? No. no. So what is it that makes it, it's just the physics? Like if you, if you start to look back, your the, the gravity is yeah. following your head or something? I think, I think the, yeah, your, your center of gravity gets turned that way. But, like, you know, there was a bunch of stunt guys around, and they were like, cool, you're getting it. And then by the time I was at the top, they started giving me, like, you know, flail your arms and stuff. I'm like, eh, I'm just trying to do it right. <laughs> you know? But then, like, the stunt guy did it from, like, 60 feet. Yeah, of course. You know? And I'm sure he's waving his arms to beat the band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what? How, how old were you— when you when you had this realization that it's the fear of, it's the it's the urge to jump, um, I don't know, like twenty three. Wow. Yeah, I was old. I was scared of heights until yeah, for a while. Even I remember, or maybe it was even after that. I remember shooting a, like a Honda commercial where I was on the roof of something, and they were like trying to tell me to do my lines, and I was like beep, 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 <laughs> sweating, <laughs> and they're like, "What's the matter? Like you did it fine when we did it up close." I'm like, "Yeah, but I wasn't." <laughs> I wasn't by the edge, you know, or like whatever. In my head, I was like stressing out. Did you, How far in advance did you know you were going to end up in that situation? I did not think I was going to end up in that. Right. I mean, you know, I didn't think that. It was, and they were just like, okay, now we'll go up on the roof. And yeah, do this. I mean, there was a guy, like part of the commercial was there was a guy hanging, but it wasn't me, like right. from a window. So I was like, oh, that guy's hanging and I'm supposed to like react to him. And I think in the original like breakdown, we were on like the sidewalk and looking up and going like, Huh, you know, that guy's hanging in there or whatever. Uh, great commercial. Uh, I forgot what it's <laughs> Honda, I said it. Um, you know, they've moved on from that campaign, uh, probably because I was sweating for no reason and I was the Honda guy. <laughs> um, um, it's an interesting idea, though, to have a campaign spokesman who's sweating bullets. <laughs> and it's never explained or acknowledged. And just nervous of life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll sell you a great car, but ooh, my life is crazy. Yeah, with only 1% down and uh, <laughs> financing options that are available. <laughs> is the sun getting closer? <laughs> is the sun getting closer? Is that also a fear that you had for a while? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that the sun was going to attack me after I jumped off of something. So when you had this revelation, was it night and day? Like all of a sudden you weren't? It wasn't a big deal to go on on a roof. It wasn't, or, or was it a gradual process? It was a gradual process. It was like one of those things where every time I would get nervous, then I'd have to think about that and go like, oh, right. that's me doing this. And I'm never scared if I'm like, like roller clo- coasters and stuff, I'm fine. I'm like locked in. Yeah. I don't know why that's okay. Always or since then? No, no, always. Even, so even when you were a kid and you had this fear of heights, yeah. roller coasters, not a problem at right, all. Right, because I'm like, oh, well, we're all on this. 
Everybody, everybody's gone. You know, <laughs> it's it's me and everybody. We'll figure it out. Do you still go on roller coasters today? Ish, yeah, yeah. I don't go to like amusement parks that often. Yeah, it. For, yeah, for me, it's also very rare. Yeah. And I used to really enjoy roller coasters, and now the idea of it is just like, why would I do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But they're still. I think. I mean, I, the last time I was on a roller coaster, I think it was like six months ago, though. Mm. And I went, I went, and I was like, "Oh, this is pretty cool." Where? Which park? Um, it was called, um, I believe, it was called Movie Land. Movie Land. Yeah, and it was it on the Gold Coast in Australia. <laughs> Movie Land. Movie Land, and it was just like it was a <laughs> Superman ride, and like there was like just a bunch of like um, comic book ish rides. So it's like what was a called? Six Flags would be yeah, here. Yeah. And it's the same franchises and all that. I think so, yeah. So it was like a Superman and a Batman ride and like a, you know, Gotham City, whatever. Like that was like a creepy one and, you know. But all vid- all, all um, roller coasters now have the same story before the roller coaster starts, which is, oh, we're going to do this. Uh-oh. Looks like we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. And then it like takes off or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> because the Joker got in there. Yeah, the Joker got in there. Well, I mean, what's like the conceit of the roller coaster? Is it supposed to be like a commuter train or something? Like, okay, everybody, we're just going to go from here to there. No problem. Well, the Superman one is, Superman, thanks for help. Like, you are Superman. Everybody's what? Superman, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. It's like, Superman, thanks for your, uh-oh, we need to get everybody out of here fast. <laughs> so, the, so the ride is oh, no. Superman saving everyone? That, yes. I think Superman is, I, I think we are on like a train because now that I think of that one in particular, the actual uh, train has Superman behind it. <laughs> like there's like a like a statue of Superman as though he's pushing us. Through this thing. But who sees this? Just the other people? Just the people watching it. Yeah, the (laughs) the ones who were too scared to ride it. Go like, Superman was pushing you. Oh! (laughs) They tell you later. Yeah. Did you know Superman was pushing you? I wish they would make it like an actual subway train. Yeah. That does all that crazy stuff. And you were inside and you could only see, I think it would be almost more exciting that you're only getting the glimpse of what you can see out the window right. that you would see if you were on an actual subway train. Then I, if that's the case, I also want them to have no seatbelts and you have to hold <laughs> on to what you can hold on to. <laughs> the straps. The bars. Yeah. <laughs> Pushing people out of the way, cushioning yourself. <laughs> <laughs> they should, it should be like four People from the park are allowed to go on the ride, like customers, and then the rest are actors, or people who are losing their minds and like fighting each other. <laughs> like somebody comes over to you and is like, "Here, let me strap." Like a guy who's trying to help, he straps everybody in somehow with a thing that looks, yeah, you know, like it's obviously built in, but it looks like it's not or whatever, right? And then you we can, you can watch the the world go by outside the window, but then also these people, these stunt people, fighting each other, yeah. Let's make it real. Let's make these. Let's make these rides real. Eugene, I like our idea. This is going straight to um, Six Flags corporate, right? That's the only reason I started this podcast. Okay, good. Was to pitch ideas to Six Flags, but we're going to pitch it with no words. That's right. Yeah, just sounds like like they did in the old days. That's right. silent movies. Are you a silent movie fan? Um, I am. Yeah, yeah. I who's who's seen- your person? I haven't seen that many, but like every time that I watch them, I don't, I, I don't know. Like every time I watch them, I'm like, oh, cool, and then I'll sit and watch it. But you're so you're not you're not immersed in it enough to say Buster Keaton actually is the right. No. But really, Harold Lloyd is better than Buster Keaton. Yeah, I wouldn't have. I don't think even if I knew them, I wouldn't have that conversation. Probably, <laughs> I do talk like that with, with, with my, my shoulders and my eyes closed <laughs> all the time. <laughs> shoulders up, eyes closed. <laughs> shoulders up, eyes closed. Talking about everything. Eyebrows to the sky. <laughs> um, silent movies are I I. I have not seen a ton of them, yeah. but it is one of those things where you there is always a few moments in one where you say, "That's pretty fucking impressive." Yeah, that they did that, and it's because it's all completely, it's the ultimate in practical effects. They had nothing else. Yes, yeah. <laughs> they're just physically great yeah. actors. Yeah, 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 and people that are yeah. risking like Buster Keaton risked death on numerous occasions all the time. Yeah, <laughs> and then Jackie Chan tried it, but he had to do martial arts with it. <laughs> do you think he wanted to just do like a Buster Keaton? Yeah, he was. He had. I bet you before every take, they were like, "Take that mustache off." 
like, ah, I want to do another one. <laughs> take that cane away. Take that mustache <laughs> the off. The cane. Do you think he just wanted to do it without the fighting? Like, how about in this one I don't fight? Yeah, anymore. how about I just talk to somebody? <laughs> How about I just talk to a friend? I talked, I very briefly talked to someone before I have to escape this falling building. Yeah. I don't feel like climbing up anymore. <laughs> Are you a Jackie Chan fan? Yeah. Is he still doing stuff? I hope so. He's in his 50s now, yeah. right? Here's a, or uh, older. I think he's older. I'm a fan. I was a fan of him. I haven't seen that much. But I like. Did you see the tuxedo? <laughs> everybody's seen the tuxedo. <laughs> That's the one gift I give everybody every year is a DVD copy of the tuxedo that I've pirated myself. <laughs> so not even. No. I bought one and then I'm just giving them out. <laughs> sure. Well, the master. You keep the master. Yeah, I keep the master. Yeah, absolutely. The digital master copy of the tuxedo. <laughs> but I'm like the way I am with Jackie Chan and silent movies and everything that I say I love. Mm -hmm. I'm very peripheral on everything. Like I'm like, man, I love dinosaurs. Oh, what's your favorite one? I mean, I don't know the names, but I love them. <laughs> what is it like you love the idea of I them? I think I love the idea of everything. Right. But what's, there must be something that you are very well versed in that you're a fan of that you are, you know, chapter and verse. Um, 90s R&B. <laughs> Maybe. There we go. Yeah. Like Joe to see a voice to men and those guys. Can yeah. Sweat. I can go through. Yeah. I'll be sure. I'll be sure. Oh, come on. All of them. <laughs> All of those guys. I'll be sure. Um, Another surface, bit of creation. Surface. You remember them? No, I don't know Surface. Um, they sang the song The First Time. Which, which goes? Good. The first time <laughs> I looked into your eyes, I cried. Yeah. Do you remember the first time <laughs> we fell in love? I know that song. Yeah. I did not know it was by Surface. Surface, yeah. I mean, and also videos back then were all very foggy. There was always a lot of fog. A lot of dry ice. A lot of dry ice. A lot of dry ice. Killed it with the eye dry ice. A lot of people just standing there singing the song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there was usually, there's a good chance there was a helicopter pad there. Right. Because they always had to be on the roof of something. That's right. So that the, the shot could like pull away and they're yeah. like, well, I'll see you guys later. Well, we're, we've been granted the, uh, the authority to paint over the H for just this shoot. But we do have to paint the H back. After we're done. Great. Cool. Uh, <laughs> we'll just fog it up. <laughs> what was, there was some video that we were watching. I was watching with my wife and it was, I forget. It was like some, some video that had a story to it. And, oh, it was ZZ Top. It was ZZ Top. Uh-huh. And we were watching this ZZ Top video and my wife was like, why was this such a big deal? <laughs> and I was like, because before... Before this, all videos were just the band pretending to play the song on a fake stage. Live. Right? And then the idea that there was even a tiny bit of story that was added onto a thing, which was a woman walking around. Is this the legs video? <laughs> yeah. Those guys, they're in front of a car. <laughs> in front of a car. <laughs> and then the woman meets somebody or there's like people, you know, tipping their shades when they see her walk by or whatever. Oh my gosh. That was so outside of the box from what music videos were. That's all it took. No, that's all it took. And then 90s R&B took off with it. Let's get back now to, there's a lot let's of- get back to basics, guys. Yeah. <laughs> let's, get to, let's get a silky bed. But then there was also, there was always rooftop and silky beds. That's right. Like those beds were silky. Somebody was always waking up. Where do you stand? R rooftop or silky bed? Where do I stand in life? Yeah. Um, I love the idea of a silky bed, but I'm a sweater when I sleep- <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> I'd wake up pretty grub. My wife would hate it. You got to get those t-shirt sheets. Yeah. They really absorb a lot gotta of sweat. got to get them jersey, them jersey <laughs> sheets. <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, potential sponsors. That one was for free. <laughs> if you are a maker of fine jersey sheets, hit us up. Eugene Cordero, thank Hi. you so much. You're welcome. Um, can you stick around? I can, yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a break. And when we come back from that break, you will meet our friends from Make Pretends. See you on the other side. Guys, you've heard me talk about them before. You're going to need to hear me talk about them again. Who are they, this mysterious they? It's no mystery. It's our friends Lisa. That's right. Lisa. L-E-E-S-A. They're a mattress company. You buy the mattresses online. 
so you don't have to go in the store, the mattress store, and feel like a real weirdo. You know, you're you're going in there, you're lying down on a mattress pretending to sleep. If you're really getting into it, you pretend to have bad dreams, thrashing around, screaming out, waking up in a cold sweat. And then you have to talk to the mattress person after that. Like you're, what you're trying to do is get the best feel for this mattress. And then this mattress store employee is going to judge you. I don't think so. Lisa's done away with that. They have created a luxury mattress. It is ordered completely online and it ships for free to your doorstep. Right to your door. It is compressed in a box the size of a mini fridge. How did they? How did compression technology get to the point where we're able to make things mini fridge sized? It used to be the only thing that was the size of a mini fridge was a mini fridge. Was a mini fridge. The ten inch Lisa mattress comes in all sizes. You're single. You're double. You're queen. You're king. That sort of thing. And it is crafted with three unique foam layers. Oh, I hate when foam layers are the same. These layers include two inches of memory foam and two inches of a really cool latex-like foam called Avena, trademarked, that is perforated to keep you as cool as the other side of the pillow. Bed metaphor checks out 100%. The Lisa mattress is 100% made in the USA. Speaking of 100%. The Lisa mattress is 100% made in the USA and it ships for free to anywhere in the USA and the Canada, the country with an article. Lisa gives you 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free and for every 10 they sell, they donate one to a shelter. That is a good thing. Guys, charitable works, they're important. Not fake ones like... Donald Trump said he was doing, he wasn't, it turns out. Please don't tweet me. Go to L-E-E-S-A dot com. L-E-E-S-A dot com slash PFT and enter promo code PFT at checkout and you get $75 off. Lisa, they make mattresses for you to sleep on at night and sometimes during the day. This week's episode of Spontaneous Nation is brought to you by CISO. Yes. You heard me if you have great hearing. CISO. CISO CISO.com. S-E-E-S-O.com. It is an all-comedy, ad-free streaming TV service, and it is made for the serious comedy fan. Now, what does that mean? Someone who's very doer, the correct pronunciation of that word, who likes comedy? No. It means somebody who is a fun person who takes liking comedy very serious. No, no, that's not true either. Here's what it is. They're a serious comedy fan in that they like a lot of comedy, like good comedy. They're real fans of it for serious. There, I think laid that all out for you. CISO is stacked, jacked, and under attacked with new original series, quotable classics, late night shows the next day, and stand-up specials. They have original, hilarious original series. This is what is great. CISO is getting in on the ground floor with creative people, and they're making shows that other people are not going to make. They're taking a chance on seriously creative people. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> How about this? Shows like Harmon Quest with Dan Harmon. Okay. Dan Harmon created Community, Rick and Morty. This show is Dan and a bunch of comedian companions. They are doing fantasy role-playing slash improv comedy, right? Like what if you played D&D with someone, but it was funny instead of tedious? And really what you want to do is go out and move around, have fake sword fights with your wiffle bats. Um, This is a hilarious show. I was fortunate enough to be a guest on the very first episode. Uh, A lot of your favorites from this show are on there. Matt Gorley's on an episode. Kumail Nanjani, Rhea Butcher. And many other hilarious people that refuse to be on my show. Uh, Bajillion Dollar Properties. This is very dear to my heart. 
This is Reno 911 meets Million Dollar Listings. It is a semi-scripted comedy about the cutthroat world of luxury real estate in Los Angeles. I play the head honcho of real estate firm Platinum Realty, and you can motherfucking bet the satirical hilarity ensues. If I have anything to say about it, it will. Kula Vilaisak created this show. Scott Ackerman's one of the producers. So many of the people that have been on this show are the cast members. Um, it's so many funny people. I absolutely love working on this show, and I think you will enjoy watching it. Season uh, two of Bajillion Dollar Properties uh, will be available October 13th. Guys, CISO's getting it done. They also have amazing stand-up specials from Brian Posehn, Wyatt Snack, Rory Scovell, Matt Besser, and Big J Okerson. That's just to name a few. And I feel like I need more than a few because in my mind, a few is three. CISO has a ton of awesome comedy. So go to CISO.com and start your free trial today. Yes. Clean out your ears, jerky. You heard me right. CISO is giving you a month completely free. CISO.com. I adore you. <laughs> Welcome back, people who didn't go anywhere. We didn't either. It's still Spontaneous Nation times. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet our improvisers. What a cornucopia of fun people we have for you today. Just a month away from Thanksgiving times. <laughs> seated next to me, you heard him very recently on the uh, uh, episode, a Live at Largo episode with Desmond Borges, where we were in a donut factory. That's correct. His name is Tim Baltz. Hello, Paul. Tim, second time on the show. How does it feel? Feeling so good. We're in the studio. I'm ready to make magic, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's great. My first experience was the live show, which was you know fantastic. So I'm, I'm glad to I'm glad to join it here. No crowd, right? Get me all revved up, you know. You don't like to be revved up, right? You like to be revved all the way down. I was a preemie C-section baby. What can I say? <laughs> Is that the truth? I like to be covered in swaddling cloth and gently nursed to sleep. Nursed, rock. Sure, both. Yes, right. <laughs> yes, nursed and a nice, rocked. A nice rocky nurse. <laughs> Were you in fact a, pre, a preemie C-section baby? I was. Yeah. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, but how was, tall are you? I'm f I'm five eleven, almost six oh, foot. You showed them. I didn't. I. I <laughs> hey, started at four pounds two ounces. Now we here. <laughs> Does your mother ever get mad at you because she has a scar? <clears throat> um. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll probably think about that. Is it okay if I think about that for the rest of my life? Yeah. <laughs> Tim, I'm going to look away from you now. <laughs> Seated across from me, making a return to the show. Think maybe this is your fifth time on the program? I think so. Carla Kakowski. Hi, Paul. Carla, what is on your shirt? It, it has says, french fries on it. Fries before guys. <laughs> <laughs> Which seems inappropriate since I'm married, and that's a plural. But guys. it's over. It's oh, it's not centered on the shirt. It's over no. the the breasts. It's on the right. chest, so it looks almost like it's a club that you belong to. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm starting it right now, and I'm inviting you all to join. <laughs> Prize. I have no problem joining that club. <laughs> that is just the, the the genetic lottery. Genetic lottery. That's not what I'm looking for. It's a happenstance. Yes. That I was born this way. That I will take fries <laughs> before guys. Me too. I love them. But you're a married fries. woman. I know. What if someone offered you fries over your husband? I'd say, this is a temporary thing, and then I'd eat the fries. <laughs> you, you, so you'd have to swear things with Craig and say, look. Yeah, just for a minute, because I can eat fries real fast. So I would ignore Craig for <laughs> however long it took me to eat my fries, and then I would continue to talk to him afterwards. So that in your mind, fries before guys means I will eat fries before I will talk to <laughs> or acknowledge <laughs> or, or acknowledge a gentleman. Yes. Fair enough. Right. We all have to have our beliefs in this It doesn't world. say fries, not guys. It's That's just, true. Right? That's true. All right. <laughs> Thanks for shrugging. Anytime. Carla, I'm looking away from you, Bye. but not that far away, because right next to you is this person, Amanda Lund. Hello. Amanda, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back. I feel like I haven't seen you in a long time. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you think be, my feeling is correct? That could be right. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, how have you been since I've last seen you? I've been well. I've just been, um, you know, doing this and that, been all around here and there. You're getting ready to decorate your house for Halloween. Yes, I'm very excited about that. 
Very excited. Now, why are you so excited? Because when you were a kid? Yes, when I was a kid, it was, and still even to, like, now my parents still decorate our home in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. um, my sister helps. Don't give, don't give out that information. I won't get out, give out the exact we'll, we'll, address. We'll, well, yeah, we'll, we'll have to bleep that out. It's by the Taco Bell <laughs> on... <laughs> Okay, so if you can find it from there, you're welcome to come by. <laughs> wow, a challenge issued to all listeners. <laughs> so they always went all out? Yeah, most years, but then we would go all out one year, but then my mom would like get stressed about it because then she'd have to clean it up, you know, because no one would help clean up. So then the next year she'd be like, we're not decorating um, Halloween this year, but we'd always end up doing it. It's the same with Thanksgiving. My mom like always ends up hosting Thanksgiving, but every year she's like, we're not going to have Thanksgiving this year. Mm -hmm. Same with Christmas too. Like we're not going to really do a Christmas this year, but then we always end up having when a, a does she holiday. when does she make the announcements? Like how far in advance of the um, holiday? Probably about like two months in advance. She's getting worked up into a tizzy where she's like, I can't do it this year, okay? And everyone's <laughs> like, okay, mom, that's fine. And then when it gets down to it, she's like, no, I want to do it. <laughs> but this is every year she does yeah, this. Yeah. So come August, we're not doing Halloween. Yeah. We're not going to do that. <laughs> come September, no Thanksgiving this year. Come October, no Christmas, guys. Yeah, yeah. Like clockwork. It's always like we don't we don't have enough money for a lot of presents this year, girls. And then on Christmas, it's like we always had such a nice Christmas. <laughs> right. So, but but now you guys help clean up now, right? Well, okay. So no, no, I don't. <laughs> Because you don't live there. I don't live there, but I'll help if I'm down for Thanksgiving. I'll now as an adult, I'm I have more energy because I don't overeat as much for Thanksgiving. I can help with the dishes. <laughs> but when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was a kid, I would eat so much that I would like could not help with the dishes. What? What would you? You would just be paralyzed there at the I table. Would stuff myself till I was sick. Oh no! To where you you feel it like in the at the top of your throat. Yeah, and like then, you're so full of food. And then I'd go back for seconds. Oh, it was a man. big day for me. I <laughs> listen. I Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I've always loved it. We used to get together with my cousins every year. Uh, we have a big family. There's six kids in my family, and then my cousin's family. There were uh, eight kids, and so we would go to each other's houses. We'd switch off, um, and so it was this gigantic mess of people, and it was so much fun. And of course, we'd eat like crazy. One time, my cousin and I. My cousin Patrick and I split a whole pie. We just ate. Oh. They put out a pumpkin pie, and we just kept eating it. And we ate. The, we kept <laughs> cutting slices, and we just ate that whole pie. And then people were like, and fast too, like real fast. <laughs> People were like, I want some of that pumpkin pie. And we're like, it's gone. That's a fun memory, though. <laughs> it, uh, it's, it is a fun memory. Um, but I, 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 I remember when it became. Uh, it became, I, I realized like, oh yeah, I, I, it became second nature to help clean up mm. afterwards. Yes. Um, do you remember that? When when like yeah. you sort of became a grown up and you were like, yeah. oh, I know why you do this. It's because you you have empathy now for yes, <laughs> a fellow yeah. adult. Because once has, you start hosting your own parties, yeah. you appreciate people who help you clean up right. so much. <laughs> so now I'll, I will help. Right. <laughs> was Thanksgiving a big deal for you guys? Oh yeah. That, yeah. My favorite holiday too. Loved it. Yeah. Because my mom would, she would bust out special things for that, you know, make special desserts or. What? Oh, she makes this we almond. We talk about food a lot on this show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she makes this almond pie. Uh huh. And we got in Ooh. big trouble. One year, she made the almond pie and then she she couldn't be there. She went to visit family. So she makes the almond pie and. It's <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. She disappeared. Your mother, your mother couldn't be there for her family's Thanksgiving. Yeah, because she, she went could, to visit. She went other to visit family. her family. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so she made, but she made the pie for us. So it's my dad, my sister, and I. And we have the pie, and we're going to our aunt and uncle. And so our cousins are like, "Are you bringing the pie?" We're like, "Yeah, yeah, we're bringing the pie." So I get into town the night before Thanksgiving, and the pie is just sitting there. It's just sitting there <laughs> at our house, and my dad's like, you know. Maybe we should eat some of this pie. I'm like, you know, we really can't do that. They're looking forward to this pie. They all they all like it as much as we do. They okay. asked about it. They asked about <laughs> it. Well, we basically cut like a fourth of it and eat it because we can't help ourselves. And then my dad's like, now just like cut the rest of it up and spread it out. And we'll like put it on a little <laughs> display or something. So we, we kind of moved it around, you know, and pieces are touching each other. And it's all artistic looking. And we bring it over on a platter the next day. My cousins immediately undo the little arrangement that we've done, put it all together so that it's in the shape of a regular pie, and they're like, a quarter of it is missing! You ate this! Your mother made this for all of us, and you ate a fourth of it last night! 
and they were furious. Wow. Wow. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them. It's the best dessert. But so they knew, as soon as they saw it, they knew. They knew. They're like, why would you do this? Why would you cut this up and (laughs) arrange it like this? They're like, I don't know. We just thought it'd be a fun thing to do. You know, cut it, it, pre-cut it into slices. No, 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 no. Something's up. And is there a rift in the family to this day? Um... I haven't seen them since. <laughs> <laughs> Carla, you're a big Halloween fan, right? I am. You I like do. to dress up and stuff. I do. Not as much, but yeah, I used to I used to go all out. There was a great picture that you posted on Instagram <laughs> of, of your husband Craig. Yes. Craig Kikowski, CAC Attackers, you know him. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, was, cack attackers. Yeah, the cack attackers. <laughs> cack attack. They're out there. They're out there. They love them. Um, he, he was helping you trim a uh, a wig oh, that right. I think was like a uh, it was like an azure color. It was a it was a yeah. blue. It was a. I, I I asked him to wear it so I could trim it, and then I took a picture of him and put it everywhere. <laughs> and he has the perfect face of a guy <laughs> who is helping someone trim a wig. <laughs> wasn't thrilled that you then retweeted it I don't think oh, <laughs> it's, it's a perfect picture it's a perfect picture I kind of remember being dead asleep actually in the middle of the night and him waking me up and saying Paul retweeted your picture <laughs> he woke you up yeah, yeah. And I was like because it's a great picture babe it's a really good one <laughs> results speak for themselves it's got a lot of hits a lot of likes a lot of, a likes. Lot of likes Eugene Halloween Halloween's a good one for me and my family Thanksgiving's a pretty good one Christmas was a a huge one. Mm-hmm. We'd like meet up with all of our cousins on Christmas Eve and have that Christmas Eve dinner. And then we'd all hang out and keep playing until midnight. And then we'd unwrap presents at midnight. One of my wow. uncles, one of my uncles would dress up as Santa and come down the stairs oh. and start handing out all the presents to all the cousins. And there was like 20 of us. What? Like it was a big crew. <laughs> How many years did he do this? Um, all growing up until I was like, um, uh, like, where where are you in the in the order? Like, are you uh, one of the younger ones? No, I'm right in the middle. Right, I'm right in the middle. So, um, but I'm the one of the older of the boys. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like, some of my cousins started having, um, like, we would do it consistently every year until I was like 16 or 17, <laughs> and then we did it again when I was like 25. And like, some of my um, cousins would have uh, little kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they would have to pick who is going to be Santa. And they were like, Eugene, you got to do it. I'm like, I would love to do it. So, uh, yeah. So then, like, I think I was 25 and I had to be Santa then. Wow. Yeah. Did you love it? I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> um, so when your uncle did it, it must have ended when the, the last, the youngest kids were old enough to not believe in Santa anymore, right? No, they still did it just to give out presents. Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love I love traditions like that. And it where was it's like, like there's no practical purpose to this anymore. And I mean it was the same Santa suit I think I had on that like I it, hope so. It was like I hope so. <laughs> ripped apart and like horrible. <laughs> but it was awesome. Wow. How old were you when you stopped believing in Santa Claus? Probably six or seven. I think we found some presents in a closet, mm-hmm. and that kind of uh, you know ruined everything. Sure, I think. But we had we had friends of the family that would dress up as Santa, and and then, and then oh, what was this guy's? I did not have this at all. <laughs> did you have someone in your life that dressed mm, up like Santa? Not on Christmas. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Middle of the summer. <laughs> It was your mom in <laughs> August. I'm not coming this year. <laughs> All right, you guys, we got to take another break. When we return, we will reveal the location provided to us by Eugene Cordero. And when that happens, we're going to do that improv I talked about. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns. Hey, guys. I want to talk to you about a new sponsor called Movement Watches. Now, here's what you may not know about me. I'm a watch guy. I like timepieces. I like them a lot. Some people laugh at watches because they have a a, a clock on their phone. Come on. You got to drag your phone out every time you want to know what time it is? What about if you're in Uh, a place where it's not cool to bring your phone out. And that's a whole other thing that I could discuss with people. Like if you're at a play and it's boring and you want to check the time, 
You can't pull your phone out. Patty Lapone will have your head. You discreetly turn your wrist and look down and you can see what time it is. That's the number one reason I have a watch. <laughs> but movement watches are great. They sent me a watch and I love it. It is very stylish, uh, brown leather band with a uh, lovely blue face. I've been wearing it for a couple days and already have gotten many, many compliments upon it. People want to know about it. Where did it come from? How can I get one? Those sorts of things. Oh, the reporter's questions. Where did it come from? How do I get one? Where am I now? Where am I going? Do you know the way to San Jose? Let me tell you about Movement Watches. It is a company started by two broke college kids. These guys or gals, I don't know. <laughs> it just says college kids. I have not been introduced to them. These people, they wanted to wear stylish watches, but they couldn't afford them. So they started their own watch company. That is true. Teach a man to fish scripture stuff. Uh, this is how I started, right? Like I enjoyed comedy. I didn't like comedy that wasn't about me. I wanted comedy to be about me. And I was like, I'm going to have to do this myself. Movement watches are extremely affordable. They are nice watches that start at just $95 at a department store for a watch like this. You're looking at 400, 500 bucks for real. These are nice looking watches at an affordable price. They figured out by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and retail markup, providing the best possible price. They have classic design, quality construction, and styled minimalism. The thing that I've been begging for. How many times have you heard me talk about it? Please, someone, will you offer me styled minimalism in a, in a cool accessory? Eh? They have sold over 500,000 watches, half a million to you, in over 160 countries. Now, you need to get one of these watches to be a cool person like me. <laughs> get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmtwatches.com slash pft. Okay? That's your promo code. That's your web address. Get a nice watch for yourself. You deserve it mvmtwatches.com slash pft watch has a really clean design and i seriously have been getting compliments ever since i put it on it's in the copy but that is actually true now is the time to step up your watch game go to mvmtwatches.com slash pft and join the mvmt movement oh ad thank you for your service Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Spontaneous Nation. It is time, everybody. We got our location from Eugene. We got our people in place ready to play. And we are ready to do our improv. Just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects to move us about in time. Let's say we're in a scene. We want to find out what's happening at the exact same time somewhere else. A meanwhile, if you will. We will use this cut to sound effect. Whoosh, we're over there. Let's say someone is having a memory or we are learning how something came to be. We want to travel backwards in time. We will use this flash back sound effect. Right backwards, the harp was going. Let's say we need to get from the flashback back to the present day or travel to the mysterious future. We'll use this flash forward sound effect. See how the vibes go up. They're progressing, going forward. Everyone understands. And we're all friends. <laughs> all right. So far. So, <laughs> Carla, now it is time to reveal the location provided to us by Eugene Cordero. And that location is Warehouse. Warehouse. We take you now to Warehouse. Oh, just going to move these boxes over to another stack over there. I'm, just... here, I'm here to help you. Don't well, worry. I well, got your back. All right. I appreciate it, Pinky. What we're going to do is uh, move this stack to over to that stack uh, to kill time, I guess. Man, you really have a, a good mind for math. Move Get a here. room already, you two. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just expressing my admiration, you know? 
All right. Well, some of us ain't comfortable with emotions. Settle down, Junior. We're just passing the time. Hey, don't call me Junior. <laughs> My name's Junebug. <laughs> I ain't going through all those syllables, Junior. If I were you, I'd prefer Junior. I think. Just saying. All right, I gotta get over to my boxes. Hey, 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 guys, hey, guys, Pinky, Junebug, Slats. Listen, I just got word from uh, from the boss. All those boxes, they're gonna be moved over there now. You oh, kidding me? God. I know, I know. Um, wait, wait, wait. Let's spin the positive. That'll help pass time too. <laughs> it will. It will. I'm telling you, you need to write a book, man. You need to write an inspirational quote book because you're just so positive all the time, Pinky. Hey, it's I mean, just, I'm Pinky. You're, you're Pinky. the other guy. I'm Slats. Get a room. <laughs> Junior. Get a room, you two, I'm saying. You keep bringing it up so much, I'm wondering if you're the one who wants to get a room. Yeah, oh. my own room, a room of my own. Put that in your little self-help book. Mm -hmm. That was Junebug. How long you felt this way? I'm gonna have a room of my own with a broom and a chair. Hello? Junebug, be quiet under those stairs. Okay, Mommy. We do <laughs> don't call me Mommy. We were forced to take you in because your parents are dead. You'll never be anything special, Junebug, and you'll never have a chair, much less a broom. I know. <laughs> I'm just well, playing. I'm glad we're on the same page. I'm just playing make-believe. Can a boy dream? No, not in this house. Don't you get it? We're jerks. One day I'm going to have a job at a factory. And then you'll see. You'll all see. Well, <laughs> the day you have a factory is the day I... Wait, uh, a job at a factory. What did you say? You're going to have a factory or a job at a factory? I'm going to have a job at a factory. Oh, well, that seems reasonable. Get back to work! No, it was oh, the boss, boy. everybody. Uh, yeah. Oh, boy. I yeah. can't believe I had to come all the way down these stairs to come to this area. So, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. I, I, I told them what you told me to tell them, that yeah. I, we have to move the boxes over there now. Yeah, I didn't like them over here. No, no, we sure didn't. Ba good call. Good call, boss. Yeah, they uh, need to be moved over there by later today. Whoa. Oh, what? Oh, boy. Oh, but my, ki my kid's got a violin concert. And Mr. Featherman, I got I to gotta have a lunch break today, okay? I got to. I got to eat. Hey. If the boxes don't get moved over there, no one's eaten. Whoa. <laughs> Mr. Featherman, can we uh, can we have a private conversation, please? <laughs> Listen, Mr. Featherman, these guys, they're they're working. They're working to just push to the limits. I mean, they're moving Are the they? boxes all around. Are they? Yeah, they're good guys, I promise. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just... All right, well, you get until maybe later today. Even later than I said later today. You have until tonight to move the boxes. But Mr. Featherman, I mean, it's... Uh, you want till tomorrow? I, I mean, it would help. Ah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, I'm just... I'm in a bad place. What is it, Mr. Featherman? Uh, I just... Uh, I just talked to my mom. And <laughs> she's still mad at me about that scar I gave her. What the... <laughs> the cesarean scar? Yeah. <laughs> she keeps bringing it up. Really? I'm 45 years old. No, I will not just get over it. It hurt. Oh, I just graduated from college. Well, honey, I can't graduate from my scar. I wish I could, but I can't. You can't? Do you want to see it? I d Again? I've, you show it to me every Monday, Mom. Well, it's Scar Monday. Look at it. I wouldn't mind seeing it again. Uh, Dad, <laughs> should I be here? What? Should I be here, Dad? Of course. Why, I just retired. I've got nothing better to do than to hang out with my wife and my son, who I'm very proud of. <sighs> okay, Frank. What? <laughs> you never let me see the scar. It's only a revenge thing to show your son. Well, I'm embarrassed of it. It's unsightly. Well, I think it's sexy, because i got a ton of time on my hands. Uh, Dad. Why don't you get a hobby, Frank? Jeez. Stone collecting or coin tossing. Uh, okay, how about drawing that scar? Ah, Dad, gross. What? Why don't you just do one of the things Mom said, like coin tossing? <laughs> that Go sounds on. like a great hobby. Or stone collecting. Yes, you want to join the coin tossing league? Yeah, I'm here. Retired uh, 
couple of weeks ago and finding myself just kind of, I don't know, looking for hobbies. I just want to warn you, it's a little bit of a lonely hobby. Yeah, it's just the two of us, just uh, us. Frank and myself. Oh, well, it's nice to make your acquaintance. I, I brought a ton of coins. Oh, Ooh. Cool. that's good. That's good. That is we're, good. We're down to four. Yeah. Really? We've been spending them. <laughs> well, to keep, to keep the clubhouse going. It costs rent, so. <laughs> it costs rent. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, let me chip in. I, I didn't know any of this. I mean, I was a bit more involved than I wanted to be. We also, we order pizza twice a day. Twice a day. Twice we, a day. Well, we gobble up that one pizza. We we just eat it. The two of us we, split it together. And I eat the cheese, and he eats the crust. I tried to do a thing one time where we uh, cut up the pizza and we well, rearranged the slices to make it look like there was more pizza. But in the end, we both knew it was the same amount of yeah. pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can fool someone else, but you can't fool yourselves. Exactly. You really can't. Nope. Not if you talk about it for a few hours. Yeah, which we have done. Yes. We've talked many, many hours about pizza slices and rearranging them. This is lovely. I wouldn't mind doing that right now. Well, first, let's take a look at the coins you brought. What kind of coins you got? Oh, this is a big flat one. Whoa. (laughs) (laughs) Look at that. I've never seen one like that. Look at that, a big flatty. Maybe we could get some soda with the pizzas when we order. Oh, yeah, yeah, now that we got these, this fresh uh, infusion of coins. Yeah. Look at this square one. Oh, is that a coin? Uh, That looks like a coaster. Oh, yeah, that's a coaster. A square coaster. coaster. Oh, my fault. What's that say on it? Hmm. This is Pap's Blue Ribbon. Pap's Blue Ribbon. <laughs> that's ah, not a fault. coin, sir. Well, I wouldn't mind tossing it, I'll tell you what. <laughs> okay, that's a different club. You might want to check out the clubhouse next door. It's, got- it's pretty packed over there, though. Lots, lots of popular people over there. It's true. All right, everyone, settle down, settle down. We're going to toss the coasters in just a second. Everyone has to get, we just need some peace and quiet here. This is the biggest turnout we've had yet. Ah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh. Why, why? I just asked you to settle down. I'm new. Now you start making noise. I'm new here. I just brought a coaster. I came from the coin tossing club. Just what? one coaster, eh? <laughs> we toss a lot of coasters around here. You got to bring a whole backpack full. Monorail made of corks. <laughs> yeah, he's got high-end coasters. Wow. Well, I'm frankly, I'm intimidated, but uh, nevertheless, my enthusiasm remains. I, I, I want to toss these coasters. My coasters are ceramic, and they're all different colors. Uh, Salmon, yeah, yeah. pink, fuchsia. We don't want to tell her, but she's just throwing dishes. <laughs> She thinks they're oversized coasters. Purple, (laughs) blue, and red. Did I mention the salmon coaster? You did. Yeah, you, you always did. do. You yeah. always do. Well, you can toss whatever you want. I like how you proudly display your scars. I think it's sexy. Oh, thanks. I was attacked by a bear. <laughs> mm. Well, that's quite a story, Junebug. Yeah, well, you know, it wasn't easy for me. I, there were, you know, I had a lot of anxiety. I had to work out a lot of fears I had to get over, but just one day at a time. <laughs> so they say. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a good quote for your book, Slats. One day at a time. One day at a time? Yeah. Yeah, not bad. I'll write that down. Make sure to give me Oh, I hate that that magic marker noise. Oh, Slats, you're killing me over here. Slats, please. We gave you a couple pencils, so you didn't have to do that anymore. Yeah, but they don't smell like these. Mm. One day at a time. Not bad. Good. Anyone got any other quotes? Just throw yeah, them away. Yeah, I got one. Somebody help me move these boxes. Listen, le- g- great. Thanks for the segue, Junebug. Listen, I talked to the boss, Mr. Featherman. Min. You should learn that. No, I was he reading it. I oh, was okay. reading. <laughs> hey, your reading's gotten a lot better. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I don't know why I waited so long to learn. You know what? I was about 23, and I realized I don't need to be scared of reading. It's it's the urge to be ignorant is what I'm afraid of. Oh. So now I read as much as I possibly can. And it's fun. Like, I like the shapes that go into Mr. Featherman's name. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> He says we got till tonight to move those boxes. Well, well, but I got my daughter's violin concert at I, tonight, and I got lunch. Jeez, flats. <laughs> I got, got no, I got nothing going on. So how are we gonna do this? You think if we all work together, teamwork and whatnot, we can get these boxes moved or what? I mean, that's a good beginning idea. <sighs> how about this though? <laughs> 
Yes. Why don't you use me? What? What's that? Hey. Drew. Nobody uses me ever. What, what's this phone doing over here? It's me. I am a phone, but I also turn into a robot. <gasps> Wait, you, you can hear and understand us? I can. And I've been hoping that you would use me because I could easily carry every box what? very Wait, quickly. No, 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 no. Hey, this is my job. We're You're not gonna, guys, 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 Hey, don't just say bad things about the Coaster Club. I'm just saying, they're a very rambunctious bunch. Listen, uh, phone, robot, what do we call you? Nuki. Nuki? 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 What kind of name is Nuki? Nukia. 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 Nukia? Are you a nuclear-powered Nokia phone? I am Nukia. (laughs) All right, I get what he's doing. Listen, Nukia. How are you going to help us carry these boxes? You don't seem to have any arms or legs that we can see. But if you can put it on top of me, then I can move smoothly through this warehouse. Well, guys, I think we should give it a shot. I want to be just like you. We are equals. You'll never be like me. You're not human. Uh, You're not human uh, like me. Junior, settle down. Junebug, please. He's not a human. I don't trust this guy. You got wheels? Yeah, I got wheels. Hey, okay. soda. Hey, a lot of people have wheels. Yeah, I'm not talking about the chair kind. Those are fine. Oh, uh, you saw what I was saying. <laughs> I got I wheels in my brain. Uh, okay. Moves my thoughts along, like like a like a machine. Hey, you should put that in your book. Uh, yeah. That's a good quote. I don't no, know that's a great that, idea. Actually, <laughs> Pinky, you okay? <laughs> I'm great. I think oh, we should try it. We sound again. Let's uh, let's give this Nuki a guy, uh, phone a shot. All right, Nuki. I'm down to try it once, but if it don't work, <laughs> I got a big old fist for you. Uh, you gonna punch a phone, Junebug? I done it before. <laughs> when? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? No. Ah. Boom, 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 boom. My hand. <laughs> That's why the knuckles on your right hand are so big, because they're they're swollen and broken from punching that phone. Yeah. All right. Well, that's another mystery solved here at the old warehouse. Nuki, we're going to put this box on top of you, all right? Yes, I can help. It's going to be a little heavy. Okay. All right, here we go. (laughs) Okay, maybe I can't help. Oh, take it off. off. Please, take take it off. 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 I didn't realize that. Nuki. I didn't know what was inside the boxes. (laughs) They're all, we don't either. All we know is they're heavy boxes. They got to be moved from here to over there. Oh, Sorry. It's okay, Nuki. We're not mad. I'm a I'm little mad. mad. <laughs> I'm not mad at you, man. I thought I could help, but I realized that those are heavy boxes. This wasted our time. When you think about it, a phone said he could help move boxes. <laughs> but it's a phone. We got duped all along. Okay, he didn't do it on purpose, I'm sure. Right, Nuki? Yeah, I just wanted to be just like you guys. Equals. Well, but- you're not. <laughs> oh. This Here's why this sucks. First of all, you're not helping us out. But then also, you're justifying Toonbug's prejudices against non-humans. No, but maybe I can be just like you. It takes a couple of you to lift each box, right? True. Yeah. Okay, pull out your phones, everyone. All right. All right. Get my phone here. Okay. All right. And then uh, I'll put the phone down next to Nuki. Yes, I will use all the phones with me together, and maybe me and all your phones can lift one box. All, all right, right let's, let's put a box on top of right, okay. Nuki and all the phones. All right. Yeah. All right. Now, all of the weight is evenly distributed over all the phones, but I still can't push it. Hey, I got an idea. <laughs> The box didn't move at all. <laughs> it did move one inch. No, it's, it's not, m- I'm not mad at you, Nuki. Maybe I, I it's because you trying. Hold on a second. The, the phones don't have the same uh, uh, sentient mind as I do. So maybe if I would carry these boxes with you, my equals, uh, uh-huh. maybe I can phone. help carry one box. We got okay, do- you, so you can carry one box as long as we are also carrying the box? We're doing it together, yes. As oh, equals. Okay, Nuki. Let me uh, let me stop you right there. Yep. It seems like you're not really able to even help carry a box. I want friends. <laughs> oh boy. Ah, oh, oh, great. Go to a club. Join a club if you want friends. <laughs> Why don't you just join a club? 
right, we'd like to welcome everyone to this first meeting of the Friends Club. Everyone here is here because they'd like to make a friend. And so, uh, I need a friend. You need a friend? That's why you're here? And and how about you? I have friends, and I'd like several more. Oh, well, there we go. That's valid. And you, sir? I'm a friendly person who wants to be friendly with more people. All right. Oh, and someone seems to have left their phone. No, I need friends. (laughs) 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 Wait, Smash it! Smash it! Smash it! Smash! 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 All right. We smashed the phone. Good work. Boy, that Nuki got out of here in a hurry. <laughs> Wonder whatever happened to him. I feel All right. bad. I feel a little bad about that. <sighs> nah, who cares? Just trying to connect. Yeah, he did a bad job, though. <laughs> Yeah, we got duped all he, along. He lied to us about being able to move boxes. And then he said he just wanted to make friends. We told him about a friend club. He was out here like a shot. <laughs> okay, I got four hours to Cordelia's violin recital. So let's start moving some boxes. And I'm supposed to have that cancer surgery. Okay, guys. <laughs> well, you and better I, not miss that. <laughs> I ain't got nothing going on tonight. Yeah, I know. You keep telling us that. Yeah, I got nothing. I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> not not going to do a cancer surgery. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky you don't have to. Yeah, lucky I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I, I'm i having some people over, and uh, we need a Santa. So Get a wanna... room, you two. <laughs> what? Yeah, get a room for me to change into my Santa costume. I'm in. Great. Uh, in the meantime, we should probably lift up these boxes. You want to try? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, ah, my cancer. Oh. My cancer. Oh, great. Oh, that really aggravated my cancer. Oh, geez, it's sticking out. <laughs> yeah, put something on that. I yeah. can smell it all the way over here. Let me pull my jacket down a little bit. Push it back in. How's get a longer that? jacket. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jeez. As soon as I get out of here get one and of, recover from the surgery. Get one of those Matrix jackets. Oh, they look, they're not for everyone. You know what I mean? I feel like if I wear a jacket that long, it's going to make me look short. They're for you. You might look really cool. Yeah, Chutz. So? You're Chutz. Yeah, I know I am. Yeah, Chutz. Yeah, it's me, You Chutz. should get a Matrix jacket and <sighs> some of those little... <laughs> Sunglasses. Like the kind that looks like you came out of a tanning salon? Yeah. 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 And then put uh, cucumber slices underneath them. Why would I? Why do I do that? Look funny. Well, it also <laughs> helps with the under eye bags. <laughs> That's true. But... Ooh, under eye bags. <laughs> oh, ah! God damn it, slats. <sighs> Guys, I think we got to face facts. We're never going to get these boxes moved by tonight. I feel oh. so useless. What are we going to do? Featherman's up there waiting on us. Well, I can see him up there in his little, his little window. Uh, get to work, you guys. I'm just saying that to myself because I'm anxious. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he talking to? I don't know. It's weird. His mouth's he's, moving. His, what's he saying up there? He's- uh, when I get nervous or anxious, I have to say things out loud. <laughs> All the time. All the time! Get it done! Everybody get it done! Down there! I got an idea. He's probably thinking of the next big business move that he's going to make for this company. He's thinking so hard. He's sweating. He's All sweating. over the place. He's bullets up there. Oh. Jeez, it's really fogging up in there. Uh, get to work. It's hot. Is the sun getting closer? Oh, it's disgusting. Uh, it his, looks like he might jump. <laughs> his silk his silk shirt is getting <laughs> soaked through with all that sweat. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Why is nobody working? Should I go down there? What's going on? Oh, I hope he doesn't come down here. I hope he looks like, like he actually sweat looks like this. he's going to jump. I think uh, he might uh, jump. Looks like he's gonna jump out the window, right? Yeah, it looks like he's. Yeah. Oh, 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 he's. Oh, oh is he getting. Oh, 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 he's, he's, oh, he's, oh, he's taking a running start. Oh, no, he's, he's going to attack oh, No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, wow. Look at him. Ooh, that's. That's a. Uh, it's a very quickly expanding pool of blood. Yeah. He landed on his neck, you guys. <laughs> right on his neck. Oh, wow. You know what it was? I think he was looking back up at the window like, <laughs> I right. shouldn't have done that. Yeah. And then the gravity caused him to turn around. That's Poor probably guy. right, yeah. Oh. So what do we do? They're going to think we did it. Hey, let's put a box on top of him. <gasps> That's a great idea, Slats. Yeah. Oh, guys, we'll put all the boxes on top of him. And then we'll be done. 
we'll be free of this life. We can leave forever. Free of this life? I'm down for moving the boxes. I don't want a suicide pack. No, 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 no. I meant free of the life here in this world. Well, this is my dream. I've always okay. wanted to be a factory worker. Now I'm doing it. If we move all the boxes today, what's my tomorrow? Hey, Junebug, Bug. I think we're warehouse workers. I'm sorry to break your dream right in half. Wait a minute. Did you think you were at a factory this whole time? <laughs> yeah, because the boxes, they're moving. Yeah, there are boxes of factories, too. That's fair. But this is a warehouse, Junebug. I feel like you, Sorry. you, you, oh. you're old. honestly, I didn't know there was a difference. <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> oh boy, you've been working here for like six or seven years. But so what? So a factory because we don't have a product is that we what don't it make is? stuff. Yeah, this is just we storage. Store we make move. memories. That's true. Mm -hmm. Hey, speaking of making things, Junebug, what if you make a new dream of being the owner of a warehouse? That'd show your adopted mother. Oh boy, but but me this, I'm a big fat man. <laughs> <laughs> You're the perfect person to own a warehouse. Hey, I I, I say we hold a vote right now. Featherman's dead. We'll <laughs> dispose of his body by putting boxes on top of it. Yeah. We need a new president and CEO. Uh, let's vote for Junior. Sorry, Junebug. All right, uh, all in favor of Junebug being the new uh, owner of the warehouse, uh, say aye. 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 All opposed. Just me. What? <laughs> it's me. Nuki. Nuki. Nuki, oh, yeah. how did you come back here? Nuki, we missed you. I couldn't find What? I did we? Him. I what? missed him. He's Pinky. a nice guy. Piggy does not speak for the whole group. Hey, Nuki, you look like you got smashed up a bit. Yeah, my new quote unquote friends did not consider me friends. Well, Nuki, uh, while you were gone, Mr. Featherman <laughs> jumped out the window. Oh no! Onto the onto the warehouse floor, landed right on his neck. He's dead. Do you think he was trying to guess if he might have broken just an arm or a leg? I think that he probably in his mind calculated he was just going to twist his ankle or something. Yeah. But then uh, he looked up at the window and oh, you know so the inertia. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know if I used inertia right. Let's. You know what I mean, though. Yeah. Let's answer it. Let's Objects in motion go in the stay in motion. <laughs> You should put that in your book. You should yeah. put that in your Write book. Write it down. Class. It's a good one. Oh, please use a ballpoint. Anyway, Nuki, so we were just voting to make uh, Junebug the new owner of the warehouse, but you say no? Well, I'm not sure if Junebug is qualified, but since Featherman is dead... Seems like Junebug is the perfect candidate. Hey. Also, you're outvoted and you're a phone. Oh, right. So I, I feel oh. like... You're my friend. I think of you as wow. a phone. Just saying. Get a room. <laughs> hey. No. Don't get a room. I thought we had something. I can get a room with multiple people and I can go from room to room. Uh, and that doesn't make her a slut. I, I don't know if that, I'm that open-minded. Me, you, and a phone? Well... I mean, it could be really cool. Ugh. Try it, Slats. Maybe sometimes stuff that's not in your book should be. <laughs> Ooh, it's going to be a tough one, but I think maybe I'd like to try it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, write that down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? Yeah, that that was, instead of using that book to write all your ideas, why don't you just put it in me? <gasps> oh, wait a second. Do you guys not need me anymore? No, we still need you to be part of the room. Oh, okay. All right. Well, at least I have a job now, right? Yeah. Wait, why were you so sexual just now? <laughs> I... I thought we were coming to this room to have, uh, you know, MFP, uh, male, female phone. <laughs> I see. Oh, I see. Boy, wow. boy, uh, boy, boy, boy. Classic misunderstanding. Yeah, I thought we were all friends. <laughs> me too. Me oh. too. I was happy about. Hey, hey guys, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I really got to make it to that cancer surgery. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, Chuts. Okay. Um all right. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, nothing ended up happening in here. Classic <laughs> misunderstanding. I thought I was going to have sex with a uh, woman in the phone. Didn't pan right. out. Gotcha. Hey, Junebug. 
Yeah, hey, it's boss to you. Can we can we quit for the night? You know what? It's 5 p.m. I gotta go see Cordelia's violin rehearsal performance. <laughs> the the, 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 the performance of the rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I, you know what? As uh, my first order of business for the, as the boss is for everyone to have a fun night. Hooray! Hooray! Thanks, Junebug. We love you. Love you. <laughs> and it all happened at a place called Warehouse. Eugene Cordero, where can people find you online? Should they wish to find you? And what would you like to promote? Um, uh, Huge Cordero on Twitter or... Um, Instagram. That's E U G. Not it, there's no H before this. That's not, right. It's not huge Cordero. It's That's huge right. Cordero. Important distinction. Yeah. Especially um, in this election season. And um, the beginning of this Halloween season, you could just find me around the streets <laughs> 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 at various haunted houses. Hey, there might be. A, look out! He might be in a trash can. Yeah, he might be in a hay bale. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I'm hiding this year. <laughs> and any any shows coming up? Do you have any regular shows here uh, in LA? <clears throat> Uh, at UCB every Monday, I do a show called The Smokes there we um, go. at UCB Franklin. So you can check that out at 7 p.m. Guys, you know what to do. It's him, boss. Hey, so, you know, it's October. <laughs> uh, Bajillion Dollar Property Season 2 is on CISO, yeah. uh, which is great. And it's coming to more and more exciting platforms every day, I think. Um, but I heard it's going to be on calculator soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's on my TI3. <laughs> TI3? TI86. Please do check out Bajillion Dollar Properties. Uh, many of your favorites from this show are on that show. That is how Tim and I met. And uh, Tim is hilarious on Bajillion. And what a pleasure it is to work with you in various capacities. Likewise, Paul. Where can people find you online? At Tim underscore Baltz. And hey, it's October. <laughs> There's going to be nothing but spooky tweets. <laughs> 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 Carla Kakowski, all the same things that I asked everybody else. At Carla Kakowski on Twitter and Instagram. That's it. Happy Halloween, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's very excited about Halloween, <laughs> which is still three weeks away. I'm Anna Lund. Um, yes, hello. That's <laughs> at, at Amanda Fun Buns on Twitter and Instagram. And stay tuned for my Halloween costume, which is going to blow your mind. Oh my gosh. Wow. Literally. Are you uh, gonna be a psych bomb? psychological fan? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and can I say? Can I mention Junketeers? Oh, sure. On comedy, it's it's a Comedy Central web series. Yes. You can get it online, and it's uh, Amanda and uh, an old friend of mine, Brian Unger, and a bunch of other very talented people. Really, really funny stuff. I watched them all in. I think like in less than an hour, you can watch the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, they're little short episodes. Yeah, so. a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Thanks, Paul. Um, Eben Schletter. Go to ebenschletter.com and seek out Eben's non spontaneous nation work and consume it because Eben Schletter is only the best. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the show. Thank you to Engineer Brett for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in presenti. Thanks to CISO for sponsoring today's episode. CISO is an on-demand streaming comedy service. Anytime, anywhere. Check out all of the original series, quotable classics, next day late night stand-up specials, and more. CISO is only $3.99 a month, and it's ad-free. Start your one-month free trial now. Available at CISO.com, the iOS App Store, Google Play Store, Roku, Xbox, and Amazon Video. If you love podcasts, and you probably do if you're listening to this, you don't want to miss Now Hear This. You'll be able to see more than 30 great podcasts live on six stages. Check out some of the best shows in the podcast universe, including WTF with Mark Marin, Comedy Bang Bang, Dinner Party Download, Criminal. It all happens at Now Hear This, October 28th through the 30th in Anaheim, California. Just a hop, skip, and a jump from L.A. Don't miss it. Go to NowHearThisFest.com to buy your tickets now. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com. 